My grind is different from everybody else's grind. I lost both my parents, you know, my mom and dad. I lost all my grandparents on both sides. My dad died when I was 13. <clears throat> my mom died 2004, July 4th, you know what I'm saying? Right after I graduated high school. So I was thinking she was holding on, you know, to see me graduate. You know, I grind hard, you know, to make my, my parents proud. You know, everybody that, you know, has my past with them, I want to make them proud, but, and that's pretty true. But I, you know, I also grind hard for my kids or whatever. So when my kids get older, they can go on YouTube, they can go on Google and look up what their dad was doing. So not a lot of people can say, oh, you know, oh, my dad was this, my dad was that. My kids will be able to go and pull, even if something was to happen to me, if I was, you know, God forbid, you know, something happens, they can always see me, you know what I'm saying? That's why I always want to put, I always want to be in front of a camera. So they can go go back and say, look, look at my dad. My dad was this, my dad was there, my dad was here. Where was your dad at? What's going on? This Flo's Dunbar, a.k.a. Flo's Dundeezy. Y'all now tuned into the Status Report with Mystic Films. Matter of fact, y'all now tuned into my show. Where's my mic? <laughs> Gone. People may know me for being affiliated with uh, Richard Rip Hamilton, former NBA player, played for the Detroit Pistons, Chicago Bulls, also went to the University of Connecticut, UConn, won a national championship, the man in the mask, shout out my man Rip. Being as though that I got affiliated with Rip, a lot of things changed. Some good, some bad. But the good was, if I shout at Rip out, people look at it like, Oh yeah, he's from Coastville. Yeah, it ain't nothing. But when he shouted me out, it was like, oh, and, you know, it grabbed everybody's attention. Like, so wait, he, what's up with these two? Like, what they got going on? First conversation I ever had with him, I said to him, yo, I apologize. And he looking like, for what? And I was like, you know, I was one of the ones that thought that he wasn't doing nothing for, you know, the city or whatever until I found out. When I found out what he did, that's what made me apologize to him. Like, yo, like, my fault, man. I didn't know, you know. So after that, you know, our relationship grew. And I told this dude, man, I said, look, man, take a picture with me. And I need you to follow me on social media. I'm talking about Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Just take a picture with me. So when he took the picture, I told him, watch what I do, watch what I do with this picture. After we took that picture, and I posted it, and then he posted it. That's when, you know, the followers went up. And uh, <laughs> that's when the hate begun. I ain't never been a dope boy, and I still got diamonds all up on my chain. I ain't never been a dope boy, but we trapped and we grind. People really know me. They know where I came from and how I was living. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, my mom sold drugs, you know what I'm saying? My dad was on drugs and shit like that. That's a struggle, but you hear everybody talking about that in the rap. You don't hear me talking about that in my raps, whatever. You know, I, I talk about my mom and dad dying, but you know, everybody has, or oh, my dad died, or we plucked roaches out of cereal. Yeah, I was that dude too. But my brother, he's damn near doing 38 to 40 years in jail. He's not gonna hear me rapping in Coatesville. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no TV shows coming down here unless I get out and bring him down here. So I want my brother to, you know, either hear me on the radio or see me on TV. So he can say, look at my little brother. You know what I'm saying? My little brother out there getting it. That backpack made business came from my speaker, my microphone, inside the backpack. I told Rip that I will perform any and everywhere. You tell me where to go, I'm there. So I was playing until I actually brought the backpack and the speaker and the microphone. I started out actually, we went to bike week. I set my speaker up in a parking lot of my hotel that I was staying in. I did every song off my mixtape and people were standing on the balconies, you know, looking down. So, you know, cheering me on like, yo, that shit hot, that shit hot. That backpack me business is my business inside this backpack. Some people think it's just rap. When I say that backpack me business, it's just rap. No, it's only rap when it comes to me. School kids. When you go to school, class, or whatever, inside your backpack, your pencil, your protractor, your calculator, everything you need to get busy, your business. So that backpack mean business is not just 
music. You're in the way, throwing shade in the back, though. My whole team pays, so maybe let the cash go. We get money over here. I hope history repeats itself because the music now they like you know, it. I you can't hate on nobody that's making money, but it ain't the same, man. Everything everything's changed, like, and hopefully it'll make that spin. And I'm just waiting. That's all I can do is wait. Talking Kevin floors. I'm talking about Kevin doors. It was beef from outside camping. I'm talking campfire s'mores. I'm talking Saturday for joys. I'm out here like I'm bored, and I don't do that stick talk. I'm out here with the board. Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Tracks don't how I run it. This beef right here is a janky, and niggas know that I'm hungry. I'm eating. You mean? Yeah.